Now let us understand what is a truss. Okay, we define truss as any structure which is consisting primarily of straight members. Okay, and is capable of supporting loads at the joint of these members. So let us see what this statement means. We are talking about any structure. Okay, so this is any structure. Okay. which is consisting entirely of straight members okay so this is a straight member this is a straight member this is a straight member okay and which is able to support loads at the joints of these members so if this is to be a truss then this structure should be able to support loads at these points okay so such a structure is known as a truss so if i were to support it let's say on a knife edge support okay and on a hinge over here this is what a truss is going to look like okay just analyze a particular member of this truss let us just analyze this member okay by the way just understand that these members could be could be rods could be beams could be anything okay so now we are going to look at a particular member this one okay so let us try to draw the fbd of this particular member so i am going to have this member like this okay there is a force acting on it like this okay due to this particular joint let us call this as a pin joint okay due to this particular joint we are going to have a reaction let us say like this okay now there is also a force acting like this over here okay due to this joint there is going to be a reaction somewhere like this and due to this knife edge support i am going to have a reaction like this okay now if you were to take resultants of all these forces acting at this point you are going to get something like this let me just copy this okay and i am going to paste it over here i am taking resultant of all these three forces which are acting at one end of the member so let us say this is that resultant similarly there are two forces acting at the other end of the member i am going to assume that this is the resultant of these two forces like this okay so over here i have a member which is basically a body which is being acted upon by two forces okay so this is a two force system therefore my forces should be what my forces should be equal opposite and along this axis okay therefore my true fbd of this particular member is going to be something like this okay i am going to have equal opposite forces acting along the axis of this member okay so i'm just going to write over here it is a two force system therefore forces must be equal and opposite okay and act along the axis of this member okay so just realize one thing over here in every member of a truss we are going to have such a scenario okay if you were to look at this member also there are couple of forces acting at this point couple of forces acting at this point there are anyways only two forces so it's going to be something like this something like this and if you draw the fbd of this member it's going to have forces like this okay 
the direction is not important it could be something like this or could be something like this over here we say that this member is undergoing tension over here we say that this member is undergoing compression but the point of the matter is in a truss every member is a two force body okay every member is being acted upon by only two forces in a truss so i'm just going to write over here every member in a truss is a two force body okay this is a very important concept in analysis of trusses so just keep this in mind let's look at that member again okay we have a member like this there is a force acting like this and there is a force acting like this these are two equal and opposite forces okay obviously we are talking about equilibrium so truss is in equilibrium this member is also is in equilibrium let us just cut this truss like this okay we are going to get a part of this member of this truss okay over here we have a force acting like this okay the truss is in equilibrium the member is in equilibrium so this part of that member should also be in equilibrium okay but this thing can only be in equilibrium if there is a equal and opposite force like acting like this over here in this part of the member okay so there must be a force which should be acting like this this is the internal force present in this member okay this is the force that is resisting the deformation in this member if there were no this force your particular member would become elongated okay and this internal force is also known as axial force okay so at times in the problems related to trusses you will be asked to find out the axial force in a member okay and this axial force is simply going to be the tension or the compression in the member so if it is like this if fb and fb fa are like this you are going to have compression okay and if fb and fa are like this you are going to have tension in any case your axial force in your member is equal to fa which is equal to fb okay so if someone tells you find out the axial force in this particular member you just find out either fa or fb and your axial force in that member is going to be that okay now let's look at what are the different types of trusses that we have okay over here i have a truss which has four joints right and it has four straight members okay 1 2 3 4 i am interested in understanding what happens when a load is applied like this okay when a load like this is applied you would realize that this particular truss is going to get deformed okay it's going to get hugely deformed as a matter of fact it's going to become something like this so this is what this truss finally looks like okay so this particular points is going to come over here this particular point is going to come over here so this is how this truss would behave under a load such a truss we call as collapsible okay this is a collapsible truss because it deforms or collapses under a load another type of truss let's look at this we have a simple triangle over here three pins okay three joints and three straight members 1 2 and 
in this case if I apply a load like this this truss is not going to get deformed or is going to get deformed only minimally okay only possible deformation is going to get something like this a small change in length may happen but that's about it okay that's the deformation that we are going to get so this type of a truss is known as a rigid truss okay we are primarily interested in a rigid truss and analysis of rigid trusses okay we looked at a rigid truss that was very simple in shape okay which was a simple triangle a complex rigid truss can be created by simply adding two members and connecting them together okay what do we do we add two members to a rigid truss and connect them together and what we get is another rigid truss okay so if this is a rigid truss let us add two members i am adding it like this okay and we have connected them together this member i have added this member i have added and i have connected them together this thing now is another rigid truss okay let's add two more members i can add one over here one over here and i'll connect them together this is another rigid truss okay so in this way we can make complex rigid trusses okay in this way the trusses that we get by adding two members and connecting them together are known as simple trusses okay so this is a simple truss okay this is also a simple truss okay i have added two members like this and connected them together i can also add members like this this is also another simple truss okay and i can keep doing this n number of times and i'll get a simple truss at each step okay so i am adding two members okay and i am adding one joint okay if you see i have added two members and this results in addition of a new joint okay so in a simple truss your total number of members is always going to be m is equal to 2 n minus 3 where this is your number of members this is your number of joints okay so in a simple truss which is this one which we obtain by adding two members and connecting them together the number of members is going to be equal to 2n minus 3 where n is number of joints okay let us calculate our number of members in this particular truss 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 24 25 26 27 28 29 30 31 32 33 34 35 36 37 38 39 okay over here i have nine members how many joints i have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and 6 okay what is 6 into 2 minus 3 it is 12 minus 3 which is equal to 9 okay if you want to verify in this particular truss you could see number of members 1 2 3 4 5 <laughs> number of joints 1 2 3 okay so 3 2n minus 3 right so 3 into 2 minus 3 that's a problem right okay i have missed this particular joint so we have four joints okay so it's going to be 4 into 2 minus 3 which is 8 minus 3 which is equal to 5 okay so for any simple truss this equation is going to hold okay 
Now let's understand how we are going to analyze a truss. Okay, over here I have a truss which is having two supports. One is a hinge support and other is a knife edge support. Okay, the way to proceed in analysis of truss is to look at the equilibrium of individual joints. Okay. The truss in itself is in equilibrium. Therefore, any member of this truss is also in equilibrium. This member is in equilibrium and so is this joint. Okay. So, what we are going to do is we are going to find out the equilibrium conditions for all the joints. Okay. We know we have two conditions. MR is equal to 0 and we have R is equal to 0. So, if you look at this particular joint, you would realize that all the forces, there would be an axial force in this direction due to this particular member. There is going to be an axial force in this direction due to this particular member and so on. So, all the forces are concurrent. Therefore, my MR is equal to 0 is anyways true. Okay, It's not going to give me any new information because if I take moment about this point, it's anyways 0, right? So, I am left with only one equation to use which is R is equal to 0 and R is equal to 0 basically gives me Rx is equal to 0 and Ry is equal to 0. Now, how many number of joints do I have? I have n number of joints, right? So, I am going to get 2n equations, okay? 2n equations by analyzing n joints for equilibrium. Okay. So, I am going to get 2n equations. Therefore, I am able to solve 2n unknowns. Right. Let us see what is 2n over here. My 2n is equal to 2n is equal to m plus 3. Okay. So, when I say 2n unknowns can be solved, it basically means m plus 3 unknowns can be solved. This basically tells me I can find out the axial force in all m of the members. Okay. Since I have m members, and I can solve for m plus 3 unknowns. I can find out, obviously, if you are looking at this particular joint, you are basically looking at axial forces. Okay, so there is an axial force in this member, this member, this member, and this member. This is the FBD of this particular joint. Okay, so in this way, you get all m members axial forces plus 3 unknowns. Okay. So, if I had to create a question for you, what I am going to do is, I am going to add a load over here. Let's say this is 10 kilo newtons. Okay. And you have a problem over here. This is a hinge support. Therefore, this is going to have reactions like this. This is a knife edge support. So, this is going to have reaction like this. So, you have M axial forces. And you have 1, 2 and 3 reactions. Okay. So, you can solve all these. You can find out the values of these M axial forces and 3 reactions. Okay. Because 2N is equal to M plus 3. And I can find out 2N unknowns which basically tells me that I can find out M plus 3 unknowns. By doing what? by analyzing each of the joints separately. Okay.